We are going to film a big scare of our little chairs. This is like a viewing room. I know. This is this is no accident or synchronicity. <laughs> <laughs> there are the hands. We barely saw it, but you see what Chris is doing. It hardly ever, 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 ever rains in the desert. Yeah, you hear I say, come on, Holy Spirit, whip something up. Yeah. Now, like, look what we've got coming our way. It started as just a little sheet lightning. Really, these talks that I do are talks of enlightenment or self-realization. Uh, some people, Christians uh, call it salvation, although this is not the salvation of, of necessarily believing in a man that lived 2,000 years ago, but this is uh, coming to the living experience of the Christ within you, or the kingdom of heaven within you, and uh, even though I can use Christian language, I can use other language, you know, we're talking about uh, nirvana, or heaven, or a state of mind that's, that's absolutely <laughs> peaceful, and joyful, and free-flowing, and, and very much a state of, uh, of happiness, of supreme happiness, that's attain simply by letting go of judgments and learning how to trust your intuition or your higher power or Holy Spirit in Christian terms. Um, and it's, it's a state of mind that's always accessible and always available, but it just takes, you might say, mind training, uh, meditation is aimed at the same thing, prayer is really aimed at the same thing. So please ask your questions or uh, share your experiences in your own spiritual awakening and uh, these gatherings are not per se for some miracles, that's just one tool among many tools uh, that people use on the path of self-realization. And, uh, and so this is definitely, I consider these gatherings just uh, awakening gatherings. In fact, the foundation that, that came up uh, that helps organize or set up some of these gatherings or put materials out is called the Foundation for the Awakening Mind. And you might say that your mind is just awakening to the truth of its a glorious reality of, of love, being pure love. And that forgiveness is a term that I use a lot. really means releasing all the illusions from your mind, illusory concepts, and illusory ideas. And clearing your mind away, very much like the Buddhists talk about, emptying your mind of uh, entering the void, although through the void is the supreme being. It just seems like a void when you're going through it because you don't know what's going to be through the keyhole. <laughs> but uh, I share the same message that Jesus shared 2,000 years ago, is that the, what's through the keyhole is glorious, and it's worth, the, uh, it's worth the seeming effort of going deep into your mind and questioning everything. Um, I'm having a debate with uh, some friends about whether your, whether your message is, is a philosophy or, or, or your own personal belief or if, or if it's based on some kind of a universal human need. Can you, can you understand my distinction? Can you talk about that? Yes. Uh, there is coffee, but you don't want to show that in on your mind. I message Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is, the message that I share really is, it comes from a, a very intimate experience that I am having with, uh, with the God or with the universe or with everything and everyone. So. I would say that in terms of, you mentioned a few different aspects there, we'll take, we'll take them one at a time. One, philosophy, uh, there are a lot of different philosophies and there are a lot of different theologies. And I would say that those are kind of like roadways up the mountain, that we tend to meet people that share some similarities in philosophies and theologies and we go, oh, I resonate with that, but I don't resonate <laughs> with that. So you might say there's a discernment going on while you're, while you're moving up the mountain. Uh, there's a lot of philosophies, and there's some of them crisscross a bit. Uh, so you keep meeting travelers along the way going, hey, happy to see you again, uh, as you keep moving on your individual uh, journey, which is very, very uh, uh, unique in one sense, because everyone who, who goes on this journey has traveled a road that is uh, seemingly very unique. The people that you meet, the places you go. So I would say, with philosophies and theologies, uh, there are many that are moving up this mountain. We might say the mountain of consciousness towards uh, oneness or the union consciousness or Christ consciousness, whatever you like to call it. So what I teach really is that I have been open in my life and I've spent 10 years in college and I've spent many years studying philosophy and psychology and religion. 
And those have all been welcome. Uh, you made it. <laughs> there were two accidents on the one. I know. Ones, so. I know. We, you know. We were things I can tell them to. So I would say that uh, I would say that a universal theology or philosophy is impossible, but a universal experience, the experience of love or peace, inner peace. I'm talking about not uh, something on the outside. Uh, that's where all the philosophies and theologies are really aiming. And so I would say, ultimately, my message is not about uh, philosophy or theology. I'm happy to uh, talk about those things, very freely, openly discuss those things. But mine is an experience where it feels like at some point along my journey, there was a leap where all of a sudden my mind became completely all-inclusive, and I saw that everyone was me. And it didn't matter whether they called themselves a believer or a non-believer, or an atheist, or agnostic, or a Christian, or a Buddha, Buddhist, or Hindu, or whatever. So mine is a, it's like a universal experience in my heart where everywhere I go in the world, and everyone I meet, it's like meeting myself over and over. And it's like having self-love that radiates so that you feel that love with everyone you're with. And frankly, I really don't care uh, what the what the surface police are. I've had people show up at my gatherings. Uh, one man in, in Texas last year, we were going around the room like this, and he said, Hi, my name's Arthur, and I'm an atheist. And I believe that if, if there is a God, his name is Arthur. <laughs> and then he said, uh, And I think that we're all part of one mind, and we're all connected. Hmm. Hey, Arthur! <laughs> <laughs> and Arthur was hanging around with me uh, like 70, 76, 78 years old. He's not he was leaving no. blind, but they were bringing and driving him to the gatherings. And Arthur didn't speak much in any of these gatherings, but he sat there with a big grin on his face uh, for like four or five gatherings. And then at the very end, he said, uh, well, I don't know. If there is a God, I, I kind of like the God of A Course in Miracles, which is just, again, this book that says that God is universal oneness, not a punishing God. And he said, the reason I consider myself as an atheist is because I don't like the idea of a punishing God or an anthropomorphic God that kind of zaps drives and, you know, sometimes in the Old Testament and the Bible is kind of a little twisted. And I was like, great, Arthur, or whatever floats your boat. I mean, you know, call it whatever you want. Call God Arthur if you want. Uh, that'll work as good as uh, Atman and, and anything else. So that was one aspect of your question. Now, in terms of like a personal experience, uh, in one sense, it has been an experience that I've gone, undergone, but it, strangely, it's, it, it is kind of like an impersonal love, in the sense that I feel like my experience of love is really undefinable, so I don't even try to define God or define love anymore. It's just what is. It's just like an experience mm -hmm. of the present moment, uh, in the simple terms. But what it is, is it's an experience that doesn't really have an object. So, you know how the bumper stickers say, I love my Volvo, or I love the <laughs> LA Lakers? It, it, where it's got something after the I love, whether it's, uh, you know, California, or New York, the Yankees, or something. Mm -hmm. Or it's, it's even beyond, I love my wife, or I love my husband, or I love my kitty cat. It's just that the I love stands by itself, uh, because love doesn't have an object. It's like it's, it just radiates to everything. Uh, kind of like in this world, it would be like, uh, like a flower giving off a perfume. It's not like telling the wind, uh, don't go over there, I don't want that dog smelling me. Uh, but I like that cat down the road, uh, blow over there, uh, telling the wind where to carry it. I mean, it's just, the flower gives off the fragrance.